Firstly, let me introduce you to Lloyd Coffee Sataga Ya Cafe, situated in the quiet residential neighborhood. Just a four-minute walk from Kamimachi Station on the Sataga Ya Line, this charming cafe, open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., remains closed on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Sundays. Though newly opened in 2023, it has already carved a niche for itself. Step inside and instantly feel the intimacy of the small space, offering just four seats. Yes, you heard it right, only four. So, I recommend planning your visit before lunchtime, or you might want to brave the summer heat for a spot on the outdoor bench. This cafe's philosophy revolves around carefully hand-dripped coffee and takeaway options for their baked sweets. This time, I ordered a takeaway scone with pistachio and chocolate. To counter the sweltering summer, I ordered an espresso tonic. The taste is a refreshing blend of the tonic water's lightness and the espresso's mild bitterness. The sweetness of the tonic was prominent and I felt it wasn't really bitter. On the other hand, the option of menu was limited. Next cafe is Grat Brown Roast and Bake. Nestled just a four-minute walk from the west exit of Komaba Todai Mei Station. This cafe operates from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and remains closed on irregular days. Upon stepping into there, you'll find yourself engulfed by a sense of tranquility typical of a residential neighborhood cafe, enhanced by the warm wooden interiors radiating a natural ambiance. This time, I ordered the avocado chicken cheese hot sandwich and a cafe latte. The cheese was stretchier than expected, its melt-in-your-mouth goodness perfectly complemented by avocado. While slightly heavy as a breakfast, it was quite satisfying. Adding an intriguing twist was the side of curry-flavored carrots, with a robust flavor that made an excellent accompaniment to the toast. There is a variety of homemade baked sweets and house-roasted coffee. I arrived shortly after opening at 8 a.m., however there were already two customers already seated. The morning opening hours allow for a delightful breakfast indulgence with an array of freshly baked goods enough to put anyone into a delightful quandary of choices. The cafe's signature buttermilk biscuits are worth a try, and I couldn't resist taking an Earl Grey muffin. It was not overly sweet, and excellent with coffee. The cafe latte was characterized by a strong bitterness that let the espresso's flavor shine. Thus, Grat Brown Roast and Bake promises an irresistible coffee and bake experience, a place where local charm meets delicious choices. Next, here is a newly opened cafe. The name is Mu Harajuku, an eight-minute walk from Harajuku Station. Just opened this year, it operates from 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., closing its doors only on Sundays. Let's step inside. Brace the airy ambiance that seems to resonate with female customers. The interior is bright and cheerful, adorned with light-colored wood, creating a refreshing atmosphere. The staff is noticeable in vibrant orange t-shirts, adding to the cafe's lively vibe. The concept here is an office cafe which is a trend that's gaining momentum in Tokyo. Around 11 a.m., the cafe starts offering a range of meals. On this visit, I ordered a cup of coffee and a carrot cake. The coffee, lightly roasted, exuded a strong acidity, while bitterness was nearly absent. The carrot cake is a gluten-free, using no eggs, wheat flour, or butter, and filled with carrots. It's flavored with a curry-like spice that packs a punch, with a sweet frosting that's a standalone treat. When combined, the sweetness mellows down the spice, presenting perfect combination. With offerings like rice balls, the cafe doubles up as a dining spot, proving its multifunctionality. Next is ISO, a hidden cafe in a residential area, an eight-minute walk from Gotoku G Station on the Odaku Line. Let's step inside. It's a bit of a strange name that translates to sociability in English. ISO's concept is a chic, retro cafe where you can find solace in music streaming from vinyl records. 
The interior leaves an impression with its brightly painted green walls, a peculiar sensation where white and green spaces coexist. Despite its considerable distance from a busy area in Tokyo, it's hugely popular with women in their 20s and 30s, often commanding a line. Though famous, it is no longer a hidden place actually. Adorable illustrations on coasters add to the cafe's conceptual impression. On my visit, I ordered their original blend coffee and a popular menu item, the pudding. The pudding was firm, its caramel subtly bitter but delicious, reminiscent of traditional Japanese puddings you might find in old coffee houses. Also, the menu is rich in variety with dessert menu, including carrot cake or cheesecake. Furthermore, the cafe has limited seating. Ensure you secure a seat before placing and paying for your order. Let me introduce MCR Hibia. Conveniently located just a 3-minute walk from Hibia Station. Operating from 8.30 am to 7.30 pm. Its all-glass exterior and interior tones of beige and white resonate as overwhelming. It's fit a mood with Hibia's ambiance, exuding an air of luxury. The cafe is housed in a stunning building, offering an open view of the verdant Maranucci Nakadori. The cafe tends to get busy from midday on weekends. I recommend going there in the mornings or evenings because during my weekend visit, it was almost always full between around 2 and 5 pm. The cafe's concept revolves around its specialty blend coffee. Roasted in-house, paired with delectable pastries baked by their patissier. The vibrant blue of the indoor sofa seats adds a touch of elegance with their coffee cup. Popular among women, it also serves as a workspace cafe, equipped with Wi-Fi and power outlets. You can choose from 10 coffee varieties to suit your preference. From strong acidic to fruity or bitter, you can select your coffee based on your mood. Therefore, it's the perfect place for coffee lovers. If you're unsure, the friendly staff will suggest a coffee based on the flavors you like. This time, I tried the rosemary chocolate almond and lemon pound cakes. The former was an unusual flavor with a cinnamon kick, while the robust flavor of the cakes made them the perfect accompaniment to coffee. Again given its popularity, I'd recommend visiting in the morning to enjoy a leisurely experience at MCR Hibia. Now I arrived at Tendaioxin Suidobashi, a cafe tucked away just 4 minutes on foot from Suidobashi Station, opposite the Tokyo Dome and directly in front of Nihon University. Open weekdays from 8 am to 7 pm, and weekends and holidays from 11 am to 6 pm. The interior is chic with a classical touch, featuring exposed concrete, meticulously chosen lighting and decor that creates a tranquil ambiance. The lighting is somewhat dim, a tad disappointing for those not seated near the entrance window. With its rising popularity, the cafe is often crowded during the day on weekends. And don't worry if you're alone, I often saw solo visitors. I was looking forward to trying their cheese toast. And that was awesome, with its vibrant look perfect for Instagram, it's no wonder it's popular. But its taste is even more impressive than its appearance. The cheese is melted to perfection without being too heavy, making it a delightful breakfast choice. The subtle blend of mayonnaise and butter adds a delectable layer of flavor. The generous serving of prosciutto on top, coupled with the cheese toast, offers a salty accent that leaves you craving for more. The toast itself is lightly sweet, bouncy, and fluffy. The latte art on the cafe latte I ordered as a set was adorable and intricately crafted. Open from 8 am on weekdays, with a full selection of cakes available even in the morning, it's a fantastic spot for a morning visit before hotel checkout. Next is Trevo Coffee and Meals a boutique cafe just a 5-minute walk from Korakuen or Suidobashi Station. Opened just last year, the concept is high quality, with a focus on specialty coffee, natural wines, and a discerning selection of salt and olive oil. It's a Korean cafe run by a Korean couple and you'll find their clean, white-based design. However, with only 5 seats tables available under 2 people, 
Furthermore, there is time limited to just for one hour following service due to the limited seating. On this visit, I ordered a deli plate sandwich and a luxury ham and cheese hot sandwich, using French butter and truffle. It took about 15 minutes to receive the order. The sandwich was loaded with cheese and had a generous aroma of truffle. It was accompanied by homemade strawberry jam, which was absolutely yummy. The side of vegetables added a beautiful color to the plate, especially the purple cabbage and vibrant orange. This is a branch of Streamer Coffee, but the architecture retains the interior of the original traditional coffee shop in 1973. Pets are allowed, and there were many customers with dogs. Situated a mere five-minute walk from Shin Nihon Bashi Station, it is open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The characteristic here is the authentic hand-drip coffee and the nostalgic ambiance. The interior exudes a calm and classic atmosphere, promising an ideal setting for spending leisurely mornings. Some of them were working on a laptop or reading in peace. On this visit, I ordered a classic menu item, Neapolitan spaghetti, and a melon cream soda. For an additional 350 yen in the morning, you can also order coffee. The coffee is an original blend, a drip coffee with a tangy taste and no bitterness. The Neapolitan has a robust flavor, slightly salty, which paired incredibly well with the refreshing taste of the melon soda. The cafe's menu is extensive, featuring Neapolitan, pizza toast, pudding, donuts, cakes, and more. If you want to feel the old classic style of coffee shops, I highly recommend you visit Kiss a Streamer. Our next destination is Ferros Coffee Jimbo Cho, open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., and just a two-walk from Jimbo Cho Station. You may have thought, where is Jimbo Cho? It's a vibrant area filled with antiquarian bookstores, coffee shops, and curry joints, brimming with historical buildings and stores. The cafe is also situated on the second floor of a building that houses a bookstore on the first floor and an art gallery on the third. Ferros Coffee's unique concept centers around serving lightly roasted coffee from Taiwan. Actually, they plan to open it as their first coffee shop. However, due to the COVID-19, they opened in Taiwan first. With a unique roasting philosophy, they painstakingly bring out the distinct traits of their high-quality coffee beans, which they also sell. Their branding is also a noteworthy aspect. Instead of naming coffees after their country of origin or farm, they're labeled as number one, number two, etc., making it consumer-friendly. From their impressive selection, I ordered the number two, a lightly roasted Ethiopian coffee with a peachy, fruity taste. Customers can choose between hand drip or cold brew methods. The coffee is free of bitterness and remarkably smooth. Chatting with the barista, I also tried a sample of their number one Colombian cold brew. The tasting notes mentioned a rose aroma, and indeed, it had a rich scent that gently tantalized the nostrils. Finally, I arrived at Cafe Kuroko, just a minute's walk from Katsudo Key Station in Chuo, within walking distance of Ginza or Tsukushima. Open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Cafe Kuroko's concept is to cultivate a beautiful mind and body through food and space that are kind to oneself and the earth. They serve organic Japanese black tea, organic coffee, original vinegar sodas, and natural wines. You can choose between lightly and deeply roasted blends for your hand drip coffee. They keep in mind to plan it kindly with their wooden interior or sugarcane straws. There is Rainforest Alliance certified, which is underscoring the cafe's commitment to environmental sustainability and traceability. It's an ideal spot for some alone time. Additionally, they offer a variety of gluten-free terrines. This time, I chose the raw chocolate terrine. Made with couverture chocolate, the terrine had a rich, melting texture that paired perfectly with a slightly bitter coffee. How was my introduction for different kinds of Tokyo cafes? See you in the next video.